Hello and welcome back to the channel. Producer Pete here. Now, as you maybe have seen in the little short video that I uh, had previously, I said that I think I find something that is just as good as the Roadcaster Pro. Um, it's a little bit above the other mixers that are out there. So I was looking at the Zoom Pod Track 8. That was a little bit of an upgrade to the little uh, interface that I had previously for podcasts. But I think I found something that is a complete all-rounder for the price that it is as well because I know uh, you know Roadcaster Pro is kind of that that standard for podcasts at the moment, but it does have a bit of a, a high price point as well. So let's look in to what I have found, and it is the Tascam Mixcast Four. So this is everything that you need to do a modern day podcast, whether you're bringing guests on, uh, you can have uh, four mic inputs, whether you are maybe calling someone on Zoom, maybe you're taking phone calls, live phone calls in the podcast, uh, or maybe you're taking audio from your computer as well, or indeed your phone. Everything that you need is built into this mixer with no added extras needed. I know for the Zoom pod track, you need to buy a little dongle, a Bluetooth dongle to allow you to either take phone calls or put audio from your phone into the mix. Everything you need is built into this mixer. Let's take a closer look. So just a quick uh, little overview before we get into the uh, the mixer itself. It has a five inch touch panel. It's uh, a versatile mixer for podcast production, up to four people. Uh, and also, you know, you have the Bluetooth connection and the USB connections as well, allowing for phone calls, allowing for Zoom calls and so on, as I mentioned. Uh, the other great thing about this is um, it is bundled with the podcast editor. So, uh, I mean, if you're perhaps just starting off and maybe you're not, at the stage of you know Adobe Edition, uh, and you are maybe past the stage of something like Audacity, you just think it's you need a little bit more. It comes with its own software, so you can uh, have the multi-track recording and editing all in one, um, which is just brilliant. It's just brilliant to have that added extra. Uh, you know, if as I said, if you're a complete beginner or if you're very advanced. This bit of software will do everything that you need it to do. So uh, let's just go inside the box. I mean, obviously, uh, you get the required leads. You have the power lead and you have the USB-C lead connection as well. Let's look at the actual connections that you have on the back. So on the back of the mixer then, obviously, you have the, the power there. You've got then the four headphone outputs. You also have the SD card, which is covered as well. Also, a little note, it is a full size SD card slot as well. Uh, you've got the USB connection here then, you've got the monitor outs, you can have then uh, some audio going to your speakers as well uh, and a line out as well. You've got the input select for this channel that has the little mobile phone symbol on it so you can either connect it via the audio cable, the TRS cable, or you can have a line in as well. So whether, I don't know, it's maybe, um, you know, coming from an iPad, you've got a stereo cable going in, uh, whatever the use of that channel is, completely up to you. Then, of course, you've got the four mic inputs as well. Also, which is very nice, um, it, they are jack as well. So you can have the XLR option or the jack option as well. So let's switch it on. So let's have a quick little look then around the mix cast for then. So uh, I'm sure if you're you're kind of wondering what the Sure SM7B sounds like, that's always uh, one of the very popular comments and popular questions when it comes to new equipment. Uh, you know, with the likes of uh, getting cloud lifters and so on. What's it going to be like to get get a mic like that to sound good on Mixcast Four? Well, as you can probably see on the screen. This is exactly what I'm doing right now. The sound that you're hearing is the SM7B plugged directly into the Tascam. All right, nothing in between, just directly in the Tascam. Now, to get to the, the settings, let me just go back a little bit there. You're seeing the level from mic one going in. Hit the three little lines up here. Then you're going to hit these uh, mics. Uh, you've got the mics, the USB, phone, and Bluetooth settings here. Click on the, the mic one and you'll see that is your gain. So, I mean, I haven't got it completely maxed out. So uh, that's how it's sounding. So the noise floor is not too bad at all. It has very good compression built in and we'll get to that now because you choose, is it a condenser or dam dynamic mic? You also choose, is it front or rear? That's because on the front, there is a little connection for a TRRS headset. So, you know, the headsets you get and there's mics built into them. You can also plug that into the front. It will give you the headphones and a mic then input as well. But we're going to choose the rear because uh, we're plugged into the rear with the XLR. Then below, you've got the settings then. So you've got voice setting. Uh, you have basically the EQ is the top one there. Um, 
I've had that on manual, so you can kind of choose where you want it, although there is some presets there, and the compressor as well, which I've just set to soft just for this little test. And you know what, I think they sound pretty decent. And as I've been kind of saying throughout this video, I think it is a brilliant alternative, and if not, perhaps better than the Rodecaster Pro, because of the price and because it basically does exactly all of the same things. Although the Rodecaster does have specific settings for specific microphones, you know, so it does have like the Rode pod mic settings where you just choose. But I mean, if you're starting from the ground up and you want to just select your own settings and get it sounding good to your own voice, there is nothing wrong with this whatsoever. Um, so yeah, that's your settings for that. Uh, that's your settings for that then and then that just kind of repeats itself uh, through all the inputs something else that you can do as well and um, which i'll not go in fully into depth with because i haven't actually played with it myself um you can uh, first of all you can assign these effects to uh, a sound pad so when you hit the sound pad you can have reverb on your mic or you can have a voice changer on your mic so you can see there that's the reverb setting you can have a, a voice changer set so as soon as you maybe you know you hold the red pad to make that voice changer and it does it live which is incredible um so we, we try a wee bit of that i'm just put my headphones from uh for this so uh, if you're going to the voice changer oh my goodness yeah that sounds very weird uh, uh that was so then you can change it and so on so I mean, for this, let me turn that off, for this to be doing it completely live as well, and as, as that wee menu said there, you can assign it to one of the pads, so as soon as you hit one of the pads, that effect will come into to, um, to view, and then obviously there, you've got a little bit of reverb as well, a large reverb and so on, so um, yeah, different wee effects you can play with, and you can have that set, so um, you know, it can be a, a little a bit of a gimmick on your, your podcast, so uh, that, that just repeats itself through the four microphones, you've got the USB settings there, um, again, so you have your voice settings, you've got a bit of processing, de and noise suppressor, a bit of enhancement as well, whether you're playing music or whether you're um, having speech through that USB uh, option. Uh, the smartphone basically uh, going to be exactly the same really as that uh, if it's talk or, or music setting and then the bluetooth you've got the pairing uh, options and then more voice settings for that as well so a very easy that's one thing you will notice uh, particularly if you have used uh, the roadcaster pro before as well these settings and these menus are very easy to get into a couple of clicks and you're there this little play button is when you've got uh, things that are recorded onto the sd card so um, at the moment uh, you'll notice that this record button isn't lit up uh, that's because I'm recording through the USB into the uh, the computer itself. So, uh, but uh, when you have the record button hit, will it even let me do it? No, because I'm recording. Um, that will obviously light up red. You've also got a little light up at the top here as well. This little uh, indicator here that will go red as well when you're recording. So it's just a nice little sign that you they are recording. Um, and then let's go into the other menus. These are your sound pads. Then you can change the colors of the sound pads. You can have um the different banks which you'll see here uh we haven't loaded load anything in actually because there'll not be any other ones but you can go into your settings and you can add some uh, effects that are in there um your applause is on yellow we can change that to green and so on that's that first little pad there that you see um let's uh, do you want to take a listen to some of the uh the sound pads let's put the sound fader up um there's your applause nice thing about this i mean you can change this where you have it here you can um have the the sound repeating you can have it on a one shot you can replay it every time um or you can have it you know as you touch it it will go off so let me just the touch one as soon as you take your finger off it will stop the sample but i like that that little sample there where it just plays it and then you can just press it again to stop the nice one is number seven is a little bleep and the good thing is if you have a lot that you want to bleep the longer you hold the button uh, the longer bleeps for and it actually does cut out cut out the mics as well when you do that i was talking away and it just stops there you are um but yeah just the the usual sound effects that you would expect and this is your uh, number eight is your uh, remember we had set the the reverb effect to that so when i'm talking away i can just hold in the eight sound card uh, sound button and there you are that has your effect so uh, brilliantly laid out you know for all of that uh, then you've got some other settings here you've got audio settings you've got the mix minus which is very important to have that on especially when you're doing zoom calls or you're taking audio from computer when there's another person on the line 
just means that they won't hear themselves back, which is um, a complete weight taken off your shoulders, you know, rerouting things all over the place. So all you simply do, go into the settings there, turn Mix Minus on, and there you are, you can have a Zoom call, and that person won't hear themselves back, which is always good. Um, feedback prevention, uh, you've got uh, the uh, auto mixer as well, is when um, with other mics aren't getting as much input as the other ones, it will lower them a little bit, so it could do a little kind of rough mix for you. It won't take them completely out, and of course, when you're recording, it's going to re- be recording multi-track anyway onto the SD card. Um, and one thing I did mention as well, they do have their own specific software as well, so it will record into their software um, multi-track too, So, which is very, very good. Um, uh, you've also got then, if I just go back here, you have the multi-track settings. Uh, you want to record multi-track to the... Um, to the actual SD card, so it's going to be on and so on. You have the USB delay, which is sometimes, you know, when the picture doesn't match the audio, sometimes you can get into those kind of settings. They can get quite technical. Of course, full instructions with them and plenty of videos on YouTube and so on to show you those. And then you've just got the date and times and the language and so on, uh, factory reset and so on. So, uh, and then uh, you go into the last final one, and that's your SD card settings there as well. So you can do the full erase and so on. Um, and also, very important, record stop confirmation. I always have that on, just in case you hit stop. There is, on this little stop button, as you can see, them. there's little kind of ridges here, which kind of stops you just from accidentally hitting it. But an even better option on top of that is to ask you, do you are you sure you want to end the recording, in case you're not? But one thing is, I mean, certainly as I've been listening to my voice in the headphones over this uh, recording, I honestly cannot believe the quality of the sure sm7b straight in dry a dry signal from the sm7b into the task cam uh yeah i'm very very impressed with that obviously then up here you've got your headphones you've got your four headphones which also uh, very nicely color coordinated so your uh, green channel is number one so there's your green headphones up there for number one you've got the monitor right then um on the top so that if you're feeding to some speakers that's how you choose that the volume and then obviously then you've just got the mute and the solo for each of the uh, the tracks and talk back is if your mic is down and you don't want anything to go into the recording but you do want to speak say you've got guests especially maybe if they're in another room or something like that and you want to talk to your guests but you don't want it to go on the recording as you're talking just hold in that talk back button uh, the guests will hear you in their headphones but it won't go on to the actual recording which is very useful uh, in some scenarios uh, so let me know what you think let me know your thoughts on the Tascam Miccast for, um, I honestly do think this is, is a very, very good alternative compared to if you're spending the money on the Roadcast Pro. I mean, I mean, some people will just prefer to have that because that's known as kind of the industry standard at the minute for podcasts. But honestly, when I came across this, I thought, hang on, this is literally doing everything that I needed to do and everything that basically the Roadcaster is doing anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, I honestly, at the moment, am very impressed. But as always, you can let me know your thoughts in the video below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. That's just a quick little overview of what I think is a very, very good alternative to the uh, the Roadcaster Pro. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.